I am pretty sure that you have seen these faux leather pieces at your local Dollar Tree, but you haven't seen DIYs like this. Hey there, my name is Yami. I am your Latina next door. Welcome back to Mi Casa, where I share high-end home decor and DIYs on a budget, as well as extreme before and after room transformations. If that's something you enjoy, please make sure to hit like and subscribe so that you too can become part of the familia. So in pretty much every Dollar Tree that you walk in, they have the amazing craft section. And in that craft section, they have these faux leather pieces. And they come in white, blue, brown, and black. You know I love creating high-end home decor on a budget. So I thought I'd challenge myself to see what I can come up with using these leather pieces. Let's get started. All right, for this first DIY, we're gonna be using this round tray. And yes, I found this at Dollar Tree as well in their little bit more higher price craft section. Now this one only costs $3, but you can use any tray that you have on hand. I needed to get a pattern on the, the inside of the tray. So I took some parchment paper and began to fit it right inside. And I creased it all along the inside edges, making sure that I get a nice crisp line so that I can later cut the pattern to size. After I had done pressing the creases, I came back around with some scissors and I cut the entire edge. I had a little bit of a tear, but that didn't matter in the end. After my circle had been cut, I laid it on top of one of the faux leather pieces. Now I am going to cut this to size, but I'm not going to cut the entire thing. Anybody can definitely do just one piece of leather and cover it with just one color on the bottom of the tray. But we're not gonna do that here. We're gonna go a little bit extra and we're gonna create a three color combination for this particular tray. I also wanted them to be in three different sizes. So the first half moon, if you will, that you see here is quite large and it's about half of the entire tray. And all I did was use a straight edge and a box cutter to cut it down. So the second half of that circle, I taped it down to the faux white leather piece. And then again, with my straight edge, I measured out the exact size that I wanted for this piece to be. And using my box cutter, I went ahead and cut a straight line all the way down. I repeated the same step with the brown faux leather as well. Then I began to dry fit everything inside of the tray. Now there was some areas where they were just a little bit too high and so what I would do is I would smooth it out and kind of crease the faux leather just like I did with the parchment paper and then I would just cut off the excess. And then once all the pieces were trimmed to fit right inside, I took some E6000 and I started adhering it to the bottom of the tray. Now I didn't use hot glue for this because honestly hot glue, since it's so thick, it will leave the indentations to show through the leather and you'll be able to see the adhesion points on the top surface. So I didn't want that. So I decided to go with E6000, not only for the stronger hold, but then again, also to prevent seeing those ridges whenever the hot glue dried. Now I made sure that there was a nice tight fit and you couldn't see any wood in between the seams of the leather pieces. So this was also a great thing about using E6000 was it was giving me the ability to kind of slide and scooch that faux leather into the other piece and making sure that there was no gaps in between. Then it was finally time to do the very last piece. The final step to make it look like it was completely finished is I took some of my DIY paint clear wax and began to wax the wood portion of the tray. I wanted to bring out the grain, let it look a little bit richer, and of course seal it so I can use it properly. And honestly, this made the tray look so much better. And that was pretty much all there is to it. But I will say though, when you look at the pattern of this, I did not do this up on purpose, 
but it does kind of remind me of the Pepsi symbol. I don't know. Let me know if you guys agree. All right, for this next one, we're gonna be creating a beautiful vase sleeve, and we're gonna be using those vases from Dollar Tree as well as the white faux leather. Of course, you can use any color that matches your style. But I love vase sleeves because honestly, they give these very simple glass vases a custom look, and the best part about it is is that you can interchange these throughout the seasons and the months, and it's so inexpensive, just put them away and then bring them back out whenever you feel like changing things up. So what I'm doing here is I'm wrapping the bottom of the vase, not all the way, probably about either two thirds to almost a half of the way up. And I am pinching it at the end, as you can see right there. And I am gonna mark where I'm going to cut the edge. Now, because I don't need to cut the entire width of the sleeve, I am just cutting it down to the area that I want it. And then I'm going to cut all the way up to the other end, as you see here. Next, I'm going to do a quick dry fitting. And this is to make sure that I have enough extra fabric on both ends of the faux leather. Then what I'm going to do is I am going to fold it down and make sure that those ends are really close to one another because I wanna make sure that the edges are exactly the same. So once I flatten it out nice and straight, then I'm gonna take my straight edge and I am gonna cut the ends off. Again, just to ensure that they are completely even. For this one, I went ahead and chose hot glue because I didn't have to worry about any ridges showing through. And I just put a very light coat on the very edge that's gonna butt up against the glass. Again, you wanna make sure that this is nice and snug. So you wanna start from the inside and work your way to the edge of both pieces of leather. Next, you're gonna need four thumbtacks. I had brass ones from Dollar Tree, so those are the ones that I used. Using some wire cutters, I removed the pins from the thumbtacks. Then using some E6000, I adhered the tops of the thumbtacks onto the leather. And I also did this to both the front and the back side. So again, I used a total of four thumbtacks. This way, no matter which way you're looking at your vase, you get to see this nice detail. All you have to do is slide this over your vase and here is how it turned out. Okay, those first two DIYs were pretty easy to make. This one is gonna require a little bit more of your patience, but I promise you, you're gonna love this in the end. Now I'm gonna be using this box, which normally houses toilet paper underneath my son's sink. You can even use a cardboard box for this. Now, the reason I'm using this is honestly is because those colors weren't really my style anymore, but the box is pretty useful. So I decided to give it a makeover. So we're gonna be doing a basket weave cover and I thought that the best color for this would be the brown or terracotta color. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create one inch strips along the long side of the leather cut piece. Now this is gonna give us the most length, but for this box, we're gonna need to add extenders because it's not gonna go all the way around. And I'll show you how we're gonna hide those sections where we need to add more length. Now, where you need more length, all you're gonna do is add a little bit of hot glue and you're gonna place one of the pieces directly on top of the other one. And as you can see, there's gonna be a seam, but we're gonna hide those. Now you're gonna wanna cut the pieces that are gonna go vertically a little bit longer than the actual box that you're going to be covering because you want to bend them over the top so that you can cover that top edge of your box. 
so that's why this piece looks a little bit narrower than the other one and if you ever like doing projects like this, I always recommend having a cutting mat that has the nice grid underneath it. It really allows you to line up your pieces and make super straight cuts along with your straight edge. So if you haven't gotten one, I definitely recommend it. Now, once all of your pieces are cut, you're gonna lay your very long strips down and you're gonna take one of the shorter pieces that's gonna go vertically on your box and you're gonna glue it on top of the seam of those long pieces. Now for this, you're gonna have to use hot glue because you're gonna want this to set quickly. If not, your checkerboard is going to shift while you're doing this and it's gonna be a huge headache. Now, I will be gluing as I go here and there to make sure that each of the basket weave pieces are staying in place. Now when you have a piece that's going to go over the longer pieces with the seams, you're going to want to make sure that that piece is over that seam. Then when your piece is going to go under the next one, you want to move that seam over to the side so that the next basket weave strip covers it right next to it. And then you're gonna continue adding your basket weave layers throughout. And you're gonna wanna add little hot glue pieces here and there, and that way they can keep your pieces nice and secure. I didn't do this at first, and then I had to go back and do it afterwards. So learn from my mistakes. And yes, this can be pretty tedious work with the weaving in and out, but as you see the pattern come together, you will see how beautiful it will lay out. Now this is what it's gonna look like when you have all of the pieces together. Now some of your leather pieces, because the way it's rolled in the package that it comes in, will kind of be a little warped here and there, but once you stretch it over your box, that will go away. So before adding the basket weave on to the sides, what I did was I cut a piece of the faux leather and attached it to the bottom of the box. I didn't want to just do the sides because I wanted it to look nice and complete, not half done. So after I glued the bottom down, I cut the corners as you see me doing here, and then I am going to glue those pieces up onto the bottom edges of that box. Next, I cut off the handles to the box. I didn't really use them, and they were gonna be a little tricky to get around. So I decided just to cover them up completely. Then I laid the basket weave on one of the sides. Now, I had glued the bottom edges to the bottom piece of the basket weave. I didn't glue them all the way up the sides, which is why you see me adjusting them in a couple of areas. But this did give me a little bit of leeway to try and tighten the basket weave just a little bit. So you can either do it beforehand or you can do it here at this step. So then I began to hot glue the basket weave portion to the box and I started at the bottom and worked my way up, working in small little sections so that my hot glue wouldn't dry ahead of time. And as I would continue, I would just make slight adjustments here and there to make sure everything was nice and tight and you could not see any of the fabric underneath it after I glued them down. Then after I was happy, I would glue the top edges down as well. And I did this all the way around until I got to the back seam. Now, when I got to the back seam, I wanted to make sure that the ends that were meeting together in the back were covered by the opposing basket weave. So I had to make different cuts at different lengths so that they would lie underneath them strategically. That way the basket weave looks seamless all the way around. The only adjustment that I had to make was I actually had to cut a skinnier vertical piece at the very end because I didn't have enough space for a one inch, but at least that's on the back side of the box, so it won't be noticeable. 
The box is looking great at this point, but it's time to clean it up. The first thing I need to do is take a little bit of hot glue and flip all those end pieces over the top edge of the box, giving it a nice cleaner look and covering those green areas that still remain exposed. Next, I'm adding a one and a half inch piece to the top border. This way I can cover those interior pieces that were uneven. Next, I'm gonna trim out the bottom of the box as well. That way it has a nice cleaner look. And I'm doing this with a piece that's only a half inch wide. And next, I put some toilet paper back in it and here is how it turned out. Okay, this is gonna be an easier DIY. You're gonna need some more faux leather and some wood rings. You can get some online on Amazon or you can get the ones from your local Dollar Tree as well. Now, for each one of these you make, you're gonna need two wood rings. Now, I am making these 18 inches long by one and a half inches wide. You're gonna fold this over and then leaving about two inches at the very top, you're gonna to cut two slits down the center. So it's gonna be at every half inch. You're gonna end up with something like this. Now you're gonna take that hoop and you're gonna wrap that end piece over it just like this. Now it's not gonna sit flat, so you're gonna have to cut on both ends of the leather piece. And so on that inner area, you're gonna notch out two triangle pieces like that. You're gonna add E6000 and you're gonna wrap it over the ring. Now it's going to look something like this. And with the help of a command hook or a little screw in hook, you're gonna be able to pull back your curtains with this. All right, another easy but super useful DIY. You're gonna take any color and you're gonna cut out a one and a half inch piece. The total length would be 12 inches. Next, you're gonna fold this in half. Next, you're gonna take a hole punch and punch a hole at the crease. Next, with the help of E6000, I adhered both sides together. Now, you can leave them like this, or you can add some gold rub-on transfers, also from Dollar Tree, and embellish it a little. Next, cut another 12-inch piece in another color, and cut it at 1 half inch width. I wrapped it around the hole I punched, and that was it. Now this next DIY is gonna be a little bit more complicated, but very useful. And what we're gonna be creating is a beautiful wall unit to handle your mail. And it's a piece that was inspired by one that was at Target, only this is gonna be a little bit cheaper. And I am gonna make it easy for you by providing the exact pattern and that you need to recreate this exact same one. Now I'm gonna have it in my free printables library on my website and all you gotta do is download it 
cut the pattern to size and you'll have this easy in no time. Now I went ahead and skipped over the part where I'm actually creating the pattern because again, I will be providing that for you if you wish to recreate this. So this is kind of what it's going to look like. And for this part right here, all you need is one sheet of that faux leather. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of detail to make it look a little bit higher end. So you will need a second one if you decide to do it. Now for this, you'll also need some dowels. And the size of the dowels is going to depend on the size of the little hooks that you're gonna use for your wall. These are fairly small because I'm using command hooks that are meant for wires in this case because that's what I had on hand. These are the command hooks I am talking about. And those dowels were cut down to 13 inches in length. Now next, what you're gonna do is you're gonna put your pattern down on your faux leather sheet and you're gonna tape it down so that you can cut the exact shape. Now I found the best way to do this to get nice crisp lines is to use a straight edge and a box cutter. Now you're gonna end up with a shape like this. Now you can definitely leave it like this, but in order to hide the fact that it's not real leather, we're gonna to have to cover that interior portion and that is going to remain exposed. We're gonna cut another rectangle piece that's gonna fit nicely inside of this envelope when you fold the flaps in. And as you can see, it covered that interior portion to make it look a little bit nicer. This is definitely optional and it will require a second sheet of faux leather, but I do think it looks better this way. Next, you're gonna wanna cut four pieces that are one inch by four inches. Okay, so next we're gonna put it together. You're gonna take that interior rectangle, add some E6000 to it, and you're gonna align it perfectly inside of that envelope. You're gonna fold the bottom flap in and with E6000, you're going to add it to the very edge and pull in the side flap. Do the same thing to the one on the right. And next, you're gonna grab those little thumbtacks again and we're gonna add a little bit of detail to the envelope. You're gonna remove the pin from the thumbtack again with wire cutters leaving it nice and flat and you're going to adhere that to the center of the envelope next you're going to take those four little smaller pieces that we cut earlier and you're going to fold them over and also glue them at the ends to create little hoops you're going to want to do that to only two of them with the other two you're gonna adhere the back portion to the back of the envelope and then the front portion to the inside of the envelope. That way the envelope lies inside of the hoop. For the bottom ones, you're just gonna glue them underneath and behind. And just make sure that everything is nice and evenly spaced so that when you put the dowels through, everything will be nice and level. Next, I'm taking some gold spray paint. And the reason I'm using this is because I have clear command hooks and I didn't want them to look plasticky. <laughs> Obviously, if you have nicer ones, you can skip this step. Now, while those dried, I decided to add additional thumbtacks to the envelope to give it an additional decorative touch. And as you can see here, this is what the hooks look like. And I added the little command strips to the back. These were actually longer ones that I had cut in half. Now you can leave it as is, or you can add S hooks just like these. I'll have these linked below. And even though you can't put anything too heavy on this, you can still find ways to make these useful. And here is how it turned out. All right, back to another simple DIY. This one's gonna be useful and very easy to make. First, you're gonna need two strips 
just like this. These ones measure one inch by 12 inches in length. Then you're gonna need a one inch dowel. This was left over from a previous project, but you can also use the plunger handles from Dollar Tree if you wish. Next, we're gonna take some E6000 and we are gonna put those two ends together. Next, we're gonna add a couple of command strips to the back of this so that it would hold nicely against a wall. After you adhere them on the wall, hammer in some thumbtacks for added support and style. And this can have many uses. If you're enjoying these faux leather DIYs, don't forget to check out my previous video where I used a thrifted leather purse and I created several DIYs from just that purse alone. So don't forget to check that video out as soon as you're done with this one. All right, let's head back to something a little bit more complicated. We're gonna cut down one of those faux leather strips just enough to give you a 12 by 18 piece of faux leather. Then we're gonna tape this baby up. Now I'm using washi tape for this and what I'm doing is I am leaving a one inch perimeter on the outside of this rectangle. Using a ruler, I'm gonna measure out one inch spaces starting from the inside of the original washi tape on the border. You're gonna cut down the washi tape on the border and then you're gonna start moving a new piece of washi tape upwards as I'm doing right here. You're gonna use your straight edge to cut straight across. This is gonna create one inch open seams all the way up this piece. I hope I'm making sense. Now here is what you end up with. Now I had already cut down more one inch strips. I used a second piece of the faux leather and I did the same thing, but this time I cut them on the shorter side. So as you can see here, I am gonna be basket weaving this all the way through. Once you're done, you're gonna remove the washi tape from the border, one at a time, and you're gonna glue down the pieces together to the very edge of the placemat. Once you have one side done, then proceed to the other side. Now this is pretty simple and each placemat would cost $2.50. And you can always do two different colors for a checkered pattern, or keep it simple and make it one color like this. Now you can definitely leave it like this, but if you want a sturdier placemat, you can always adhere felt fabric on the underside of your placemat to give it a little bit more stability. Now, something else that you can do for a place setting that's a little bit more simple is to create a piece so that you can insert your utensils and your napkins in. And for this, we're gonna need a piece that's four inches wide by 13 inches in length. You will also need to cut another one that's four inches by nine inches. You're gonna use E6000 or the adhesive of your choice and you're gonna glue the smaller piece onto that longer piece. Next, you're gonna glue the perimeter of the bottom and you're gonna fold over the very edge 
of the end so that you don't have an unfinished end at the bottom. Then you're going to fold over that bottom piece to create a pocket. And in order to make sure it had a nice tight seam while it dried, I used these little sewing clips that I had on hand to pinch the ends. I put them at the top edge of the pocket as well. And once it was dry, here is how it turned out. And I think this looks so good with that basket weave placemat. Let me know what you think. Now if that's still complicated, here's an even easier, simpler piece that you can add to your table setting. These napkin rings are from Dollar Tree and they were in the nautical section this summer. And all you have to do is remove that little bamboo weave that it has, I'm not even sure what it is, but all you have to do is remove it and add a piece of leather in replacement of that piece. And getting the pattern for it is as easy as just placing that piece that you remove onto the leather and using that as your guide to cut it to size. And of course, with the help of some hot glue, you have much nicer napkin rings for your place setting. All right, for this next one, we're gonna be creating a beautiful Kleenex box. And what do you need? You need a Kleenex box and some foam board from Dollar Tree. And the reason I am not just draping this over the box is because if you take one of these faux leather sheets, it will not completely cover a standard cleaning box. So we're gonna create a frame out of the foam and we're going to cover that so that that slides over the Kleenex box. And of course, you're going to need two longer pieces for the longer sides, two smaller pieces for the smaller sides, and one large piece for the top. Now before you cut out the top, it is best to put the bottom frame together, which is all of the sides. That way you know exactly what measurement you need for the top. Make sure you trace and cut accordingly. When your box is assembled, you're going to cut two rectangles for either side of the smaller ends. Make sure that they're longer and taller than your box. Now it doesn't need to go over the bottom opening, but it does need to go over the sides like this, as well as the top. That way you can fold them over. Now I did cut off a little bit of the excess on both sides since the pieces were too large. And then I came back in and cut off the corners as well. That way I removed any bulk. Once I made those cuts, I folded them over and adhered them with hot glue. At this point, I needed to add a hole in the center top for the tissue, so I created a little template and traced it onto the center. You can either do this as an oval, but I decided to go with a rectangle to give it a more modern look. And with my box cutter, I carefully cut it out. Next, I want to take a larger piece of that faux leather and drape it over at the top of the box. I want to make sure that I'm at the very edge of the box and making sure that there's enough to go all the way down the sides of the box on both sides. Once I removed any excess faux leather, I began to adhere it onto the box. I started from one side of it and then worked my way up over and around. And I made sure to pull the leather nice and tight so it had a nice fit. Mm -hmm. 
Next, I cut a slit down the opening of the center of the tissue box. Then I added corner slits so that I can fold them right over the edges. Once those were glued down and secure, here is how it turned out. For this last one, all you're gonna need is one small piece of faux leather that's one and a half by 12 inches long. You're also gonna need a wood ring. Now I'm showing you a smaller one here, but you're actually gonna need a wooden ring that's larger than this because it's gonna work best with a large one. Again, I'll share the link in the description box with my favorite multi-pack of wooden rings that come in so many different sizes. Now you're gonna take about two inches of the fabric and you're gonna fold it over the top like this. Now this is solely for aesthetics, but I decided to round out one end of this piece to give it a softer look. Now on the other end where the ring is gonna go, you're gonna to wanna to cut two triangular pieces as well so that it could adhere better onto the ring. You're gonna insert the ring and then with some E6000, you're gonna adhere it onto the faux leather piece. Next, you're gonna add some E6000 to the top flap and bring it down and over onto the front. And with the help of a command strip as well as a push pin, you can put this on your wall and it can be used as a towel holder. Perfect for renters as well as those who own RVs or campers and you don't want to damage your walls. Well, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below which one of these was your favorite don't forget to go to my website. I'll have the link below for the template so that you can recreate that really cute incoming mail station for your wall. Thank you all so much for joining me this week. I can't wait to see you all next week with another home decor and DIY video. In the meantime, you can check these out right here for more inspiration, and I will see you soon. Until then, adios.